Welcome back and thanks for joining. In this section, we'll talk about monitoring of AWS services with CloudWatch. So CloudWatch helps you with monitoring, metrics, and logging as well. There are numerous CloudWatch benefits which we're going to talk about in this lesson. So CloudWatch is a service that allows you to monitor various elements of your AWS. Or it could be your EC2 instance, or it could be your database, NoSQL like DynamoDB, or it could be your Elastic Load Balancer. Well, it integrates with every other service that we have in AWS. So let's go ahead and go over into the AWS Management Console, see how CloudWatch will be helpful to monitor your EC2 instances in this example. So as you see here, in the AWS EC2 dashboard, I've got an EC2 instance. If you click on your EC2 and then click on your monitoring section, you will see several parameters related to your EC2 instance. For example, you might want to check what is the CPU utilization, what is the disk reads and disk read operations, and several other parameters related to the EC2 instance. We do not see any numbers in the graph here because the EC2 instance has just been created a minute ago and there hasn't been much responses and CloudWatch hasn't been able to capture much on its dashboard. That being said, let's talk about this. On the top right hand side, we got a filter which will let you filter and look at those statistics based on what you want to see. For example, if you want to see the data of last 24 hours, just click on it and then it will filter it automatically. Okay. If you want to see a holistic status of all the services in CloudWatch, then you got to go to the CloudWatch specific dashboard. To do so, you got to go to services and under management and governance, you will see CloudWatch. So let's click on it and then navigate to the CloudWatch dashboard. There you go. So what I see here is an overview of my services and if I have any alarms related to that service, are they in OK status or is the data insufficient for AWS to capture, right? So if AWS CloudWatch is not getting enough values from Route 53 or EC2, is then going to go and fall under insufficient. If there is some problem, let's say CPU is high or you're pumping in too much of data into S3 or if your usage is high, or if your billing budget has gone beyond a certain number, they will then fall under the alarm section. And if everything is okay, it then goes into the okay section. Well, that is about dashboard. But then you can definitely go and click into these individual sections on the left hand side. Let's say alarm, insufficient or okay. And then find out why is it insufficient? Why is it okay? And why is it in alarm status, right? So let's say I click on insufficient and at this point, it says that my Route 53 status is not good. Well, of course, because I deleted the Route 53 DNS zones, I deleted the CloudWatch alarms from there as well, and that is why I do not see any alerts and hence insufficient data. Okay, there might be another reason as well why insufficient data is here because when I was creating a health check in Route 53, I typed in a dummy random IP address for the CloudWatch for the health monitoring to go and check. And because the public IP address was random, it was dummy, it is just saying that it does not have any sufficient data to pull that information. Okay, and you will see a similar kind of information under alarm and also under OK. Well, you'll see information in OK if everything is all right, just to tell you what service is running properly, OK? Now, this particular dashboard that you see is a new dashboard, right? There was an older dashboard as well, so I'm going to switch to the original dashboard by clicking on that, and that's how it used to look earlier. So if you see certain screenshots in the blogs when you're, let's say, researching and going to any third-party websites to search, or maybe some YouTube channel to learn more about it, you may see screenshots like this. So don't panic, Amazon is constantly changing just like other clouds and as we say, cloud is a moving target, right? So things keep on changing from the cloud vendor side. You don't have to worry about, just keep your fundamentals strong and rest of the things will fall in place because things in the back end keep on changing. Amazon improvises the look and feel of every service constantly. So do not focus on the aesthetics or the beauty of the console, but rather focus on fundamentals and build your foundations right. Okay, I'll go back and click on this one to look at the new design. So that's how it looks today. More modern and more appealing. 
One thing that I want to show is the dashboard section. You can create your own dashboards for different teams. Let's say you got a team for storage and there's another team for server management and every team wants to look at their own services, right? Why would a server team want to look at storage aspects and why would a storage admin want to look at database aspects, right? So for that purpose, you can go ahead and create a new dashboard and let's say I'm creating a dashboard for the storage team. So I'm going to call it as storage team dashboard. All right. And click on create. And that is ready for me. It gives me something like a pop up and it asks me, how do you want to see information on the dashboard? Do you want to see like a graph? Do you want to see numbers? Do you want to see some kind of a text or do you want to customize any queries, right? So let's say you want to see how many buckets do you have in your S3 bucket, right? In that case, line or stacked area will not fit into this particular use case, but you may want to select numbers, right? Another use case, if you want to see the CPU utilization of your EC2 instance, what would you do? Well, you would then look at line graphs or stacked area. Comparing the CPU utilization between multiple virtual machines or multiple EC2 instance, which one do you think will you select? Well, I will select the stacked area because thereby I can have multiple graphs plotting over the X and Y axis, right? So depending on your use case, you may want to pick and choose a particular widget type on your dashboard. I will select the number at this time and click on configure. Now you got a blank slate. There's nothing inside the CloudWatch graph because poor CloudWatch still doesn't know what you want to see on that widget, right? Now, because we have created this dashboard for the storage team, I will choose either, let's say S3, how many block storages do I have? So let's say I select S3 and click on storage metrics. Okay, now as I scroll down on the last column, you will be able to see all the metrics for your buckets, right? Now, let's say I want to see how many objects do I have in my bucket, right? Or what is a bucket size? So let's click on this particular bucket. The bucket name is my account ID hyphen the bucket name. Okay, so it should tell me the bucket size. All right, I do not have any number because it's going to take some time to pull and get that information for me, all right? That being said, you can also customize it, increase the size and decrease it as well. And then you can add more widgets to the same dashboard, right? So let's say I want to now select a line widget, click on configure and then go back to the same stats. Let's say S3 storage metrics. And now you want to plot the graph and want to see how many objects have been created over a period of time, right? So developers are constantly working on your bucket. They keep on uploading content to your bucket. So you want to get stats of how many objects have been uploaded over a period of time, right? So let's say I'll click on this particular bucket, a bucket called as deep racer, and I want to know the number of objects, right? So at this point, I do not have any values on the graph. So I will see it as empty when I click on create widget. But you know what? Let's change the timelines to three days or maybe one week. There you go. Now I've started to see some numbers, right? Now there has not been any activity on this particular bucket since weeks now and hence I do not see any data. So that means nothing has happened from 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. But then if you customize it, let's click on those three little dots and then edit. I can change it to duration, weeks, months, etc. and then say update widget. All right, so that is how you can create different kinds of widgets on your dashboard. And finally, when you're happy with this dashboard, you can click on save dashboard and then share it with other team members. Okay, there are other items to look at here in the dashboard. For example, if you click on actions, you can create a new dashboard, save the dashboard as rename and several other simple self explanatory options. You can also view and edit the source and it shows you the whole thing in JSON format, which could be copied and then pumped into your own custom monitoring tool as well. Okay, let's go ahead and add one more dashboard for our EC2 instance. So I'm going to just call it as infra dashboard, click on create. And this time I want to add a line widget, click on configure. And I want to get some stats for my EC2 instance, okay? So how many EC2 instances do I have? So I want to find out the total disk reads, disk read bytes, disk write bytes, 
network in network out as well so you might have already noticed as I keep checking these boxes the graph is already populated with few statistics as you see on the top I'm more interested in the CPU stats so I'm gonna select the CPU utilization of this particular EC2 instance okay and now I'll click on create widget so there you go I see some stats and this EC2 instance was just created few minutes ago and that's why I'm able to see the stats on the dashboard so this is how you can configure your dashboard to look at specifics of the EC2 instance or the S3 bucket so you can look at the CPU utilization the number of objects in your S3 bucket and get alerted as well so if your CPU utilization goes over 80 percent you can configure in such a way that you start getting alerts on your email that is done through simple notification services you can also get an alert if the number of objects in your s3 buckets let's say goes about 100 let's go ahead and see that in action since we have the two dashboard here i'm going to go to alarms and then we already noticed this alarm earlier but then what if i have to create a new alarm right so i can go to the graph and select a particular metric for my ec2 instance so i just want to say that if my cpu utilization goes about 80 percent i want to be alerted i want to take an action so i can go here and then select cpu utilization because i've selected a metric now what do you want to do with it if the cpu goes about 80 percent for a period of five minutes then what do you want to do with that so i'm going to put my metric value here and by doing so i'm just saying that so if the average cpu utilization goes over 80 percent for a period of five minutes i would like to get an alert now as we discussed earlier alerts are done through sns sns stands for simple notification services notification can be done through several means it could be done through email or sms or webhooks there are several ways and we'll talk about that later in the upcoming lesson but at this time i'm just saying that if the cpu is in alarm status i would like to have an alert sent and i've already pre-configured two sns topics and behind which my email is embedded okay so notify me is embedded to the following email address whereas if i quickly take it off and then look at the other one it is linked up to well nothing well, I can go to the SNS console and then attach an email or attach my phone number to it. But then you got the point here, right? That SNS is used for notification purposes. And at this point, I will get rid of this and then select an SNS topic that has the following email address set, right? Now, apart from sending emails, what else can we do? Well, proactively, we can do certain things. Now, because the CPU utilization is over 80%, you don't want to be taking action reactively, but rather be proactive and fix that problem, right? So, what are we talking about here? We're talking about scaling the service. Now, because the CPU is at 80%, we would like to build new virtual machines in that auto scaling group. So, you have two options to take. You can either take an auto scaling action or add an EC2 action as well under which you can stop the EC2 instance terminate the EC2 instance or reboot this instance but if you do not want to operate at an EC2 level you can go ahead and do an auto scaling action as well which will automatically start building EC2 instances so that the average CPU utilization calms down and your services are not impacted right so if you just have an email option selected your action will be reactive in nature but if you do one of these you are taking a proactive approach okay i hit next here and then type in an alarm and just say cpu is high and this is what i will see in my email as a subject and the description can be typed here i will just ignore that and hit next and there you go so in the dashboard i've configured that if the cpu goes above 80 percent show that to me in the graph and if that situation ever happens i get an email and we did notice that cloudwatch has the options to proactively configure auto scaling and also take ec2 related actions and this is not just for ec2 or s3 but every other service that we have in aws right it can be done for databases it can be done for NoSQL, s3 
Beanstalk, Lambda and every other service that CloudWatch integrates with. So just to summarize what we learned so far, CloudWatch is a monitoring service from Amazon. It will let you monitor every other service that we have in AWS. I just want to mention that there are CloudWatch agents that are available. So if your services are non-Amazon, for example, it could be on-premise or it could be on Azure. You can have CloudWatch agents sitting on them. So you go ahead and download those agents and install it on your premise or in Azure. CloudWatch still has the capability to monitor them. What a powerful tool, isn't it? Well, that's all for this lesson, folks. Let's go ahead and talk about an auditing tool in AWS, what's called as CloudTrail. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next lesson.